It is four o'clock on Monday morning. Ninema rips the herbs from her garden. She is a market gardener. Her crops are healthy. She has green fingers, but she doesn't know it. Selling her fresh produce at the Indian market is how she earns a living. Life is tough, and so is Ninema. Placing the dani and mint neatly in her basket, she sighs. Her work is always punctuated with sighs. They are sighs of acceptance. She accepts her lot in life, but is not resigned to it. Everyone who knows Ninema knows that she is facing her challenges and winning. She is respected. After stacking her basket with fresh herbs, she washes her face and feet with cold water from the outside tap. She has never had running hot water. To take her weekly bath, she boils hot water on the open fire. She coils her long black hair into an uncompromising burn at the nape of her neck. She'll wash it on Saturday when she takes her bath. For now it is neat and out of the way. Her presence displaces the space around her and fills it with gravity. She is a beautiful woman. She makes heads turn when she walks. Her hips sway from side to side as she moves her body in rhythm to balance the basket on her head. Her thin chiffon sari drapes effortlessly around her perfect body as if kept in place by her high from breasts. Long toned arms and a cinched waist cause men to stop and stare. They turn away in embarrassment when she faces them with her piercing black eyes. The women admire her high cheekbone. Ninema does not take the attention she gets to hurt. Her concern is with earning a living. She sighs as she wipes her clean feet and slips on her shampoos. These saddles are reserved for walking to the market and back home. It is a long walk. Once at the market, the young woman takes off her shampoos and places them neatly on the side of her stall. She sets up her stall, then arranges the herbs appetizingly. It is hot and she sweats while she works. Her sari clings to her firm skin. The other lady hawkers setting up their stalls chat with her and each other amiably as they walk. Nenema rarely chats back. She has no time to waste. Nobody minds this. They know her. Once her stall is ready and only when it's ready, Nenema takes a few sips of tea she brought with her in the heavy animal flask. She waits for her first customer. The first customer and the last customer are very important. The first because he opens the business day. The last because he closes it. It is imperative that she takes extra care with this particular particular customers, for they bring luck. She learned her trade from her mother and father, and they passed down this wisdom from generation of family trading. Nenema believes it is grace and power. She also has faith in good accounting. She can add faster than you can say the word herb. Mr. Chindran is a fast customer. It has not escaped her that he often was the first to support her when she opened the stall. The ladies teased her saying that he was in love with her. But Ninema smiled their silliness away. How could a rich lawyer from a brown caste be interested in a poor girl from a low caste? It was unthinkable as having a relationship with a white man. Chandra knew it too. That's why he didn't go any further than early morning her boys, even though his mother complained that he bought too much. The mere sight of Ninema made his day. He wondered how he would manage to do his hub rounds once his mother arranged a marriage for him and some prying, jealous wife took over the buying. The thought of it made him hot under the collar. This morning he buys even more than usual. She does not encourage his infatuation with her. She treats him as she treats all her loyal customers with respect and appreciation. When Chindran goes on his way, Mrs. Singh comes by. She's a rich old woman who always haggled over prizes. But she, too, was loyal to Ninema. Her difficult nature made her troublesome. But Ninema handled her masterfully. How much for three branches of parsley? 
says Mrs. Singh. Six hands, auntie, replies Nenema. So much, says Mrs. Singh, waiting for Nenema to lower the price. But Nenema does not budge. Not for rich Mrs. Singh or anyone else. Mrs. Singh takes the parsley then, moves to the next herb, trying the same inadequate ploy to get better prices. She did it as much out of hoping for a bargain as out of boredom. The haggling prolonged the market buying and she wanted a long market day so that she did not have to go home to a large empty house where there were servants to do everything including the cooking. This way she could interact with Ninema for as long as possible. Ninema ran her business with an iron fist. There were people who liked her herbs and her manner of doing business. They supported her, but there were others who were offended that she did not bring down her price, or that she not sold only herbs, or that she was not chatty. But really, what they did not like was that she was her own person. Ninema did not give in to what other people expected of her. This frightened some as much as it thrilled others. The ladies in the other stalls were particularly fond of her because of this. They often compromised themselves at work and at home. It made them angry with themselves. But when they watched now how Nenema carried herself, they looked up to her. She was one of them, but something about her was different. This difference did not repulse them. It drew them to her because they wanted to learn her secret. At lunchtime, she takes out the sandwich she packed that morning. She eats them as she works. The stall is busy. Ninema always has a steady flow of customers. Today, like every other day, she picks up on passing trade. The customers are attracted by the smell and look of her stall. The herbs are diminishing first. She hopes to have enough to satisfy all her customers. Business is flourishing. Ninema will need to sow more seeds. She cannot keep up with the demand. Lunchtime is the busiest time of the day. This is when most of her of the rich customers come to buy. It is their lunch break. Most are clerical workers and professionals. They buy their herbs for the evening meal. Even though it's busy, Nenema still finds time to take a personal interest in each of her customers. She knows whose son is studying to be a doctor far away in India and whose daughter just got married. She knows who moved into their new home and where they bought it. Nenema is genuinely interested. Someday, with the money she is saving, she hopes to buy a small house of her own. When Dr. Sidat comes to buy his herbs, she leaves the other customers waiting while she talks to him. He's a doctor. The two discuss Nenema's mother's ailment. Dr. Sidat is an old, much-loved GP, and he pays for his sage and dania. Dr. Siddharth tells Nenema that she has to come to him for treatment of a cold or flu in a very long time and that he hopes it remains that way. Nenema smiles. She hopes so, too, she says. The other customers wait patiently while the good doctor and Nenema finish their chat. As the market day draws to an end, Nenema packs her stall. A last minute shopper drops by. It's a new customer. Being the last customer, Nenema gives her an extra bunch of mint for free. The customer is happy and promises to always shop for her herbs at Ninema's store. With a sigh, Ninema counts the remaining bunches of herbs to be sold the next day. The profit for the day was good. She folds the table away and places the fold-up chair, unused, on top of a table. She counts the money and ties it in a handkerchief on a string around her waist. Asari conceals the bulging hunky full of coins and notes. It is the close of business. Placing a basket of unfold, unsold herbs carefully on her head, Ninema sashays away from the stalls, making her way home. The other women are still cleaning up and putting away their stalls. As Ninema walks away, a man approaches her seemingly out of nowhere. He blocks her way. She stares at him straight in the face. He grins lasciviously. She has not seen him around before. Suddenly, he extends his arm and pinches her erect nipple hard. Then he laughs out loud 
turning on his heels, he says, If you like that, follow me. His tone is vulgar and his tread cocksure. Time stands still. Ninemam removes her basket from her head slowly. She does not want to bruise the herbs neatly nestled inside. With deliberate care, she places the basket on the ground. She removes her champagne. She follows the man and she beats him on the back of his head with a sandal. He turns around, shocked. That is when she hits him all over his face and torso. He's too astounded to do anything except cover his face with his hands. Halfway through the beating, Ninema hears the jeers and cheers and laughter of the women hawkers. Up until then, she was not aware of them having watched the entire scene. The unknown man is too embarrassed and dumbfounded to react. He's afraid of the women coming up against him on him. Ninema gives him a few extra hits with her sandal on behalf of all the women. She's strong and he whimpers. When she's satisfied and her rage is spent, she puts on her sandal. The women clap and laugh heartily. Bending down gracefully, Ninema picks up her basket and places it gently on her head. She says goodbye to the women once again and makes her way home. It is dark when she finally reaches home. She places the basket under the kitchen table and covers it with a clean cloth. Ninema removes her shampoos and places them side by side under the kitchen table. They are ready for the next day at the market. She washes her face and feet with cold water. She feels refreshed. Before starting her preparation of the evening meal, she sits down for half an hour. Closing her eyes, she dreams of the home that, she, that will be hers someday soon. Then she would not have to contend with pulling landlords. The house will have hot water too. And the kitchen will be on the inside. She will have her own large garden where her herb will flourish. And maybe she will start growing some fruit for herself. Thanks for your time.